know, when Jesus rose from the dead and went back up to heaven, persecution was great. The church was being persecuted by the government. So what happens when there is persecution? Are, the, are most Christians very bold or afraid? Afraid. Afraid. Because there was a risk in being known as a worshipper. That they could be arrested, they could be thrown in prison, they could be beaten. So just as 2,000 years ago, many believers were afraid for their lives. It was like being a Christian today in Saudi Arabia. Right? It's all not easy to be a follower of Jesus in some of those nations. To be freely. And today it's similar that many are not afraid of being caught by the government, but are afraid of being caught by virus. Right? And so I believe that you have pleased God by your faith this morning. Yes. Because you have not chosen to stay back because of fear, mm. but because of faith that His presence is greater than any other presence. Amen. And because we believe, we have acted on our faith, we come here this morning and we are pleasing God. So are you ready to be blessed by the Lord? Amen. Because you know that God takes delight in you. Yes. He's blessed by your presence. It's blessed by your presence and I often wondered why didn't all 500 wait in the upper room? You know when Jesus was about to go up, before he went up, he told the disciples, about 500 people on the mountain, wait in Jerusalem until you're filled with the Holy Spirit. Wait in Jerusalem. Don't go anywhere. But you know of the 500 people, how many actually waited? 120. 120. Why? And I often wonder why. Why why not be the rest? I mean here Jesus himself telling us to wait. I mean, they knew who Jesus was, they saw his miracle, they knew he rose from the dead. Can you imagine if somebody you die for three days rose from the dead, told you something to do it? Right? Here's 500 people, and this is our missions offering. Uh, thank you, Dalia. 500 people were told to wait by the resurrected Christ, and only 120 waited. Why do you think the other 380 didn't turn up? I give you the answer earlier. They were most likely afraid of being arrested. Why? Because Jesus was arch enemy of the Roman government. They just arrested him. They lied to the soldiers that he was risen from the dead and said someone took his body. So possibly, most likely, the 380 were afraid what would happen if they were seen in a gathering for 10 days in a row. You mean the, bully, the, the Roman soldiers would come in and grab some of them to prison. And so of the 500, only 120 waited. But the good news is, the Holy Spirit still came. Because the Holy Spirit, the presence of God does not come in response to quantity but to unity. Amen. Amen. So although Amen. the majority were not there, in fact only 24%, 120 or 500 is about 24%. So even though right now we are in a way full in this room, right? No more room for more chairs. And this room, if, if there's no SOP, we could probably have 150. But you know what? The power is in being one. And because we're here together, united in faith, yes. united that we are going to be blessed, expect a good suddenly. Amen. 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 Expect a good suddenly. Mm. Because it is impossible to believe and have God do nothing. Amen. He always moves in response to faith. This morning we're going to have the communion at the end of the service. And uh, I'm going to share about the theme uh, of August. And if we go beyond August, which is really the time and the season we are in, which is taken from Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28. It says there, uh, receiving an unshakable kingdom. What kingdom? Unshakable. And that comes from Hebrews 12, 28. I'll read from verse 27, 28, and then we'll pray. Verse 27 says, once more includes the removal of those things that can be shaken, so that the things which cannot be shaken will remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear, for God is a consuming fire. Since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace to serve acceptably. Grace to serve. Father, we just thank you for your presence. Lord, we want to become more aware of your presence, Lord. Even this morning, we thank you, Jesus, for manifesting your presence in a special way to each one uniquely, Lord, in, in, in 
the areas you know we need, Lord. We just thank you for giving us ears to hear, eyes to see, to see your goodness, to see your glory, to hear your voice, Lord, to be changed and transformed and healed and set free in your presence. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for anointing us with the spirit, spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you. We thank you, Lord, that we will not be the same in your presence. Be glorified this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Ah, let's do this. I was just reminded. Let's go to our Bibles. Okay. It isn't my Bible. This is my Bible. Yeah, you can pull your phone and your Bible inside. <laughs> okay. It is God's word to me. It is God's word to me. I am who God says I am. I am who God says I am. I have what God says I have. I have what God says I have. I can do what God says I can do. I can do what God says I can do. My mind is alert. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. My heart is receptive. And I will never be the same. And I will never be the same. Unshakable kingdom. Why is this so important now? Because everything that can be shaken is being shaken. And you know what is being shaken more than anything else that is in common to the majority of people today? They're being shaken in their peace. They're shaken in their security. They're insecure. They don't know what the future holds. They're shaken in the area of fear and stress. They're shaken from their joy. Why? Because all these things were connected to a kingdom that could be shaken. Right? The world's peace, the world's joy, the world's security was based on shaking, shakeable ground. It was based on circumstances that could be shaken. But God wants this time for us to be so rooted in the kingdom that cannot be shaken so that nothing can shake your peace and your joy. Amen. Because that is the evidence of God's presence in your life. Amen. That is the foundation to be led by the Spirit, to hear His voice. Amen? Amen? So there's a battle right now. Are you going to lose your peace and joy because of your circumstances? Or are you going to keep and grow in your peace and joy because of His presence? Amen. And, and there's two powerful examples, at least two powerful examples in the Word of God. Uh, we know in Psalm 23 it says, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. death. Not that the shadow, that means death is nearby, enough to cast, near enough to cast a shadow. That is one shadow. That is the shadow that now many people are in. What is the shadow of death? The shadow of the possibility of being infected. Amen. That's the shadow of death. But how many you know that the Bible talks about a positive shadow? Mm. The opposite shadow. You know where that shadow is found? Psalm 91. Mm. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Whose presence are you more aware of? Are you more aware of the presence of the shadow of death or the presence of the shadow of the Almighty One? And that is the battle the church is in right now. Psalm 23 also talks about He prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemies around the table, but who's at the table besides yourself? Jesus. Amen. He prepares the table, so he's seated with us. So the question is, are you more aware of your enemies around the table? Or are you more aware of his presence at your table? That's right. And that's the theme, really. The key for this morning is the last song we sang. How to become more aware of your presence. More aware of the shadow of the Almighty and not the shadow of death. More aware of His presence at our table and not the presence of our enemies. And that state is your peace and your joy. And so the unshakable kingdom is rooted in faith that makes us righteous. And so I'm going to talk about the four pillars of the kingdom of God. It says Romans 14, 17, for the kingdom is not meat or drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy, 1 Corinthians says, the kingdom is not in word, but in power. Right, so the foundation of the kingdom of God, the foundation of our peace, the foundation of our joy, the foundation of power is the righteousness to faith. Being in right standing with God, in right relationship with God, because we believe Him, because we believe His word, because we trust Him. And because we trust Him, we are more aware of His presence at our table than the enemies around us. Because we trust Him, we are more aware of the shadow of the Almighty than the shadow of death. See, the devil is fighting for your focus. The strategy of the enemy is to distract you away from his shadow to the double shadow. 
away from the presence of the Lord at your table to the presence of your enemies. That is the strategy. Do not give in to his plan to distract you. That is how mankind fell. You know, when Neil Armstrong, the first man who walked in the moon, took the first step, we all know what the famous saying he said, right? One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. But I think he borrowed that from Eve. You know what? When Eve took a bite, it was one small bite for man, one giant fall for mankind. Right? Well, her mankind fell because of the one bite. But how did the devil get her to take the one bite? He distracted her at the right time. When she's hungry, looking for food now, hey, Eve, have you thought about the one tree you cannot eat? You see, if he had tried to distract her when the stomach was full, no temptation. So I'm sure he tried to distract her when she's hungry. When she's looking for food, of all the amazing things God had given, that's when he came to, to think for her to think about what God had not given her. So we need to guard against distraction. So this morning I'm going to focus on the kingdom. It's not meat or drink, but righteousness, peace and joy. Because kingdoms that are built on food and drink are being shaken. People whose whole security and peace that is based on material things, that are based on clothing and shopping and all that, they are paralyzed with fear, many of them. They've lost their peace, they've lost their joy. Because the signal the kingdom that cannot be shaken is built on righteousness, peace and joy. Now the first thing is righteousness, which is so important, it is simply being in right standing, it is being in favor with God. You know, if you have favor with the right person, you don't need anybody else's favor. The question is, whose favor do you have? All you need is the favor of the right person and your life is set. The problem today, many people are running after everybody's favor. In fact, many of them are the wrong people. Right? The world says, if you know the right string, you pull the right string out. Yeah. Uh, favor doesn't come from the east or the west or from the Lord. When you have the favor of the king, why do you worry about man's favor? If not, any, not anybody will like you. But the most important to person to remember is, is the Father have favor upon you. Is his favor upon you. And who does he favor? Those who trust him. Those who believe him. Those who believe his word. And so, why is righteousness so important? Because number one, it's in the Lord's prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. So the kingdom of God is the first thing we got to pray for, the first request. Not my problem solved, not my needs met, is Lord, before myself, your kingdom come. Now what's his kingdom? It's righteousness. But well, we start with hallowed be your name. What does the name of the Lord include? Jehovah Sikhu do our righteousness. So we begin the Lord's prayer by praising his name. The Lord, you are my righteousness, Jehovah Sikhu do, hallowed be your name, the Lord, my righteousness. Your kingdom come, your righteousness come. Amen. So he is our righteousness. His kingdom begins with righteousness. But guess what else? The foundation of his throne in Psalm 89 is made up of two things. Righteousness and justice. Psalm 89 says, Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Let me read that. Okay. Psalm 89 verse 14. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. But I guess that's not all. Hebrews 1.8 says, your throne of God is forever and ever, and the righteous scepter is the scepter of your kingdom. Wow, the righteousness is the scepter, you know, it's what the king holds. It's what Esther received, how Esther received favor, remember, when she lives her life to approach the king. She's not supposed to see the king, and she's hoping that he would receive her and not condemn her to death because she shouldn't be there. And he held up the scepter of favor. That's the scepter of righteousness. So righteousness is the foundation of his, it's his name, is the foundation of his kingdom, is the foundation of his throne, is the scepter of his righteousness. And Psalm 23 says, He guides us in paths of righteousness. Amen. Is righteousness important or not? Yes. Because when we are not righteous through faith, if we don't believe God, if we don't trust his word, we will lose our peace, we will lose our joy, we will lose our power. So the question is, how do we walk in the righteousness of God? to walk in His peace, to walk in His joy, to walk in His presence, to walk in His power. What's the key of righteousness? It is simply believing. Now why is faith so important? Because no faith, no relationship. You know, there's something you have in common with all your friends. And all those you spend time with, all those you meet with regularly, you know what you all have in common? You trust one another. You will not waste your time talking to anyone whose word you don't trust. That's right. right. If somebody has broken their trust enough times, you won't waste your time with them. 
How can you have a relationship if there's no trust? How can God have a relationship if you don't trust Him? So what's the evidence of, of faith? We're going to look at faith this morning. Because this is what many people have been challenged. The only the 120 out of the 500 trusted God to wait. The 380 feared God that they may be arrested and never turned out and they lost out. David trusted in the shadow of the Almighty more than the shadow of death. David trusted in the presence. You know, when you are not focused on the presence at your table and your focus distracted by your enemies, you cannot eat. No more appetite. You're obsessed with, oh, this is going to happen. Look, the enemies are all around. How to enjoy my food? But when you're more aware of His presence, wow, unreal. Jesus is here. Why do I have to worry about it? He's with me. Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is with me. Amen. His presence is with you. Are you more aware of His presence? Because that is the foundation of faith. Whose presence are you more aware of? Now the devil is very smart, but guess what? In the mind of Christ is smarter. How many of you have the mind of Christ? You know the mind of Christ? You can outwit the devil. You know how the devil is making the world more aware of the devil's presence? Every time you step out of your house, he makes you more aware of his presence. What? Hey, my mask, where's my mask? I'll make sure I got my sanitizer. I better carry me with my thermometer too. So every time you think about your mask, you think about cleaning your hands, what are you more aware of? The presence of Mr. Kobe. Amen. Right? So he is making the world more aware of his presence through all the outward things you are doing, that you have to do. So we are being reminded constantly throughout each day, the minute you walk out of your house, of his presence. Why every time you're going to put a mask on, every time you're going to wash your hands, Every time you're going to take a temperature, you're becoming more aware of His presence. So how can we turn it for good? Because the good news is, what the enemy means for evil, God wants to turn it for good. You know how they get back at the devil, you want to take revenge? Ah, devil, you want me to be more aware of your presence, huh? Turn everything that you do, reverse it around. Ha, huh, cover my mouth, I can wear a mask. I will not speak fear. I will not speak unbelief. I will not speak what is against God's word. I will speak faith, I will speak life, I will speak the promises of God. I will speak so that I am reminded of His promises. Let the mask remind you to shut your mouth of everything negative. That's what the angel did when he came to John the Baptist's father. You realize that? When you read what happened, Elizabeth and, and, and Zacharias were, were trying to have a child. Years to getting old, no child. So John, uh, Zacharias, the priest, goes into the temple and then the angel appears and says, Congratulations, you're going to have a son. Huh? How can? Okay, no more talk. <laughs> so, right? He had a spiritual mask. No sound to come out. Remember John the Baptist when he put in your mouth? Nothing negative. Because death and life is in the power of your tongue. Let the mask remind you to speak life. Yes. Let the mask remind you to call for Because that's the evidence of faith. We believe, therefore we speak. And the minute you speak life, guess what happens? Faith comes by yeah. hearing. And when you believe, you're made righteous. Amen. Okay, what about your hands? Psalm 24 talks about the condition for dwelling in the secret place. Who may dwell in, this, in the secret place of the most high? That's the, that's Psalm 91 is the blessing, Psalm 24 is the condition. Psalm 24 says, he who has clean hands and a pure heart. Amen. Right? So every time you squirt the sanitizer, remember Psalm 24, clean hands and a pure heart. What does hands represent? They represent both your work, your business, and your relationships. Because you work with your hands, right? Is there integrity in your work? Do you work as a believer, or do you work like the non-believers? Is that truth, honesty, in how you do your business? Number two, how do you use your hands relationally? Is it used to bless or is it used for abuse? It's said that even many so-called Christians use their hands for violence among their family members. If they don't hit their family members, they hit things in the house. They bang the table, la, whack something, la. make sure there's no pets in the house, la, can, uh, with the leg will go. Okay. Maybe the dad cleans it too. Clean hands and the floor, huh? Okay? Is there, are you revealing the Lord in your work, in your business, and in your relationships. And guess what? Many times, when anger leads, leads to sin, it's not just with your hands, but with your mouth too. You sin with your words. 
The Bible says, be angry and sin not. Don't let your anger cause you to say or do something you regret. You know what the most, the, the best anger to have is? The things that make God angry. So many times when I'm angry for the wrong reason, I say, the Holy Spirit, Father, forgive me. Help me turn that anger off and be angry with the things that make him angry. You know, we'll never, we'll never have to struggle with temptation if we hate the things that God hates. We have to re-channel, redirect that anger to be angry with everything that tries to tempt us to grieve the Holy Spirit or quench the Holy Spirit. So, what the enemy means for evil? Okay, put the mask thing, the, the, the virus, you know, put the mask thing about your words. And you put the sanitizer thing on, am I glorifying with my hands? The word of God talks about lifting up holy hands, the surrendering to Him. Right, clean hands and pure heart. Uh, also, one more, one more SOP. Don't be too close, huh? Keep the distance. Remember that the very unbiblical song is watching from a distance, not watching in front of you. It's right here. God is not watching from a distance. It's very close. But there are people we need to keep our distance. Mm, amen. Where's the found someone? Blessed is the man. You might be blessed. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the godly or stand. Stand in the path of sinners, not sit in the seat of scornful. Why you never practice SOP? Why are you standing too close to the sinners and sitting in the seat of scornful? What is that talking about? You're not saying that we have to hide ourselves and avoid the world. Make sure that they're not influencing you. Make sure that their influence is not greater than your influence over them. Yes. See, Jesus was called, actually when Jesus was called a friend of sinners, it was an accusation. He wasn't, he wasn't really a friend, you know why? Because if he only called his own disciples friends after three years, how to call him a friend of sinners? Friendship is not automatic. There's a condition. You are my friends if the, the world, the sinners, never con met the condition. So it was a false accusation that he was a friend of sinners. No, he was a light to the sinners. He was a light in the darkness. They never changed him, he changed them. They either changed and walked with him or they walked away from him. But they never come to, felt comfortable being the way they were, were in his presence. So who are you close to and who are you far from? It's interesting, the world first kept using the phrase uh, physical distancing. Then only recently it changed from physical to social distancing. Right? They want people to still connect, but not physically. But you know what, even when the world was distanced physically from those outside the house, guess who they came closer to? Those inside the house. So during this time of MCO, the whole world has got closer, has had to spend more time with their own family members. And for some non-Christians, it's a very stressful time. Because, especially in China, I heard that many Husbands and fathers were away from the house so long working in other cities, other towns. So now no work, they have to come home. The first time they're going to see the face of their wife for so long all day. They start fighting. <laughs> you know, so it's sometimes it's easy to hide behind our work. You know, peace is not the absence of strife. You know how to not have one argument with anybody in the house? Don't just talk to them. Pretend they're not there and you'll never have an argument. Is that peace? No. Peace is the presence of the Prince of Peace. It's not the absence of something, it's who is there in your house. So make sure we are close to the right people. Don't waste your close proximity. Say, God, you are putting me, I have to spend more time with my family than I could before because now I cannot hide behind my work. Help me put things right. Why is God allowing this? He wants to heal his church family by family. Amen. Right now, God has family sized the church. Churches all over the world around the same size. One third of their auditorium capacity. So nobody can say, well, every Sunday, yeah, thousands of us meet, no, no. only one third of our life sizes. Why? Because he doesn't want our security to come from how big we are, but how one we are, how united we are, how much of faith we are. All it took was 100 training in the upper room, and the Holy Spirit came. Not because of quantity, but because of unity. Unity of faith, working through love. And so one of the keys for righteousness, if we want this foundation of righteousness that opens the door to his peace, opens the door to his joy, his, his name, Jehovah Sirkunu, it's the foundation of his throne, it's the path of righteousness we walk in, it's the scepter of favor, we've got to believe. How to believe? Focus and hear. Remember I spoke about distraction. See, what you listen to is what you look at. If, the, if Eve had not looked at the forbidden tree, 
She probably would not have heard his voice. She should have focused on another tree away from the voice of the serpent or the dragon or whatever. So what you look at, you become. You're drawn to. What is taking your focus? Which shadow are you focusing more? Which presence are you focusing more? The presence of the Lord at your table in your house or the presence of the devil outside your house? Are you focusing more on the shadow of the Almighty or the shadow of death? Where is your focus? Because if you focus on the wrong thing, you cannot hear his voice. You cannot hear, you cannot believe because faith comes by yeah. hearing. So what you hear depends on what you're looking at. So you want to hear his voice, you've got to look at the Lord. That's why we're told to seek his face. In fact, the first thing we have to seek, not only the first request in the Lord's prayer is your kingdom come, but Matthew 6 3 says, seek first his kingdom. Don't seek first your needs to be met. Don't seek first the Lord for your problems. Seek first his kingdom. When you seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, all the things you need will come. But when you seek first the things that you need, they won't last if you don't have his peace and joy. Why is it so important to seek first? Because this is, remember the story of the boat in the storm? And Jesus was, was asleep in the storm, in the boat. And all the disciples couldn't rest. They lost their peace. They lost their joy. Oh, they were waiting for the storm to stop before they could be at peace. But what was Jesus doing? Sleeping. Before the storm stopped, he was sleeping. Jesus was not sleeping because there was no storm. He was sleeping in the middle of the storm, as he said. Mm-hmm. And so God wants us to raise the hallelujah. Not speak negative. Let your mask remind you to speak life in the middle of the storm. But you see, we only have authority to speak to the storm when you can first sleep in it. And that's the evidence of faith. You see, that's the unshakable kingdom. See, for the disciples, their kingdom was shaken because they got storm. Like the boat, like the kingdom is like the boat shaking. But Jesus, though the boat was shaking, he was not shaken. He was the boat was shaken, but he was not stirred. Yeah, shaken but not stirred. The world is being shaken right now. So many have lost their peace, so many lost their joy. So many are worried about the future. No security in the future. How long will they have their job? Will they have a pay cut? Do they have to change jobs? What will the economy like? Our foundations are being shaken. But if you want if you want God to bless you in the middle of the storm, you need to be planted in the unshakable kingdom. Amen. The kingdom of his peace, the kingdom of his joy, the kingdom of his presence, and the door to his presence, the door to his power is focus and care. Faith comes by yeah. hearing. And you hear the right source, you hear him because you're focused on the right thing. Amen. Focus on his promises. His plans for you are good and not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. He will work, Romans 8.28, He will make all things work together for good to those who love, love Him. How many of you here love the Lord? Yes. Amen? So, what are you worried about? You're going to make all this work for your good. Amen. You know why? Because before and after verse 28, before it says the Holy Spirit is interceding, and after verse 28 it says, Jesus Himself is praying for us. Amen. So, you got to believe that all things will work for good. Because the plans for you are good and not evil. So this is just a season that will pass. You are not going to set up a camp, a tank here, you're going to keep walking through. You're not going to be distracted by the enemy, you're going to enjoy the fruit he puts before you. Because your future is in his hands. Because your focus is right. And when your focus is right, you hear correctly. And how you know you're hearing from the Lord? Because faith increases. Your faith decreases, you're here, your focus is the wrong thing. The level of faith goes up or down to show you if you're focusing on the right thing or not. If you're losing your peace, losing your joy, getting more stressed up, you're looking at the wrong thing. Remind yourself of all the promises. Remind yourself of all the altar calls you gave and all the prophecies you received. Tell the Lord, God, you spoke this over me. My trust is in your promises. You are not a man that you will lie. Focus on his promises. If you struggle to believe his promises, remember your testimonies. So faith comes by hearing. Now why is faith so important? Because when you believe, when you focus on the promises of God, remembering His testimonies, guess what happens? Now you begin to enter His rest. So the evidence of faith is His peace, is the rest of His peace. You're no longer stressed up, you can sleep in the storm. And peace leads to a supernatural joy. You're just joyful, you don't know why. It's not based on understanding, it's joy that doesn't make sense naturally. But that is where your power is. That is where your authority is. So when you enter the place of rest and you begin to hear Him, you know what we are meant to do? We believe, therefore we 
speak. God does nothing without the spoken word. You know that nothing exists that God created without the spoken word. In the beginning, God said. Though he's God, he had to say. If God be God, has to say, not just take things into being. How much more you and I have to speak? That's why, you know, his name is Word. In the beginning was the Word. And that word is not this word. In the beginning, there was no this word. In the beginning, there was no old King James, New King James, NIV, never incorrect version. <laughs> in the beginning, was only the spoken word because of the living word. And everything that exists was because of the spoken word. And how are we saved? By confession. With the heart, we believe unto righteousness. With the mouth, we confess. We speak life. We call forth those things that be not as though they are. So what comes out of your mouth reveals what's in your heart. When you believe, words of life will come out because you're focused on the right thing. When you're focused on the wrong thing, unbelief comes in, you speak, you're distracted by your enemies, you're distracted by the wrong shadow, the shadow of death. So it's begin to speak life and call for those things that be not as who they are. Say, Lord, I thank you. You're making me more aware of your presence. I'm remind, I remind myself out of your promises. I remember my testimonies. This is what you said. Make me more aware of your presence, Lord. Righteousness. And when you begin to practice righteousness, you know, righteousness will be practiced. 1 John 2 and 1 John 3 talk about the practice of righteousness. How do you practice righteousness? Or oh, remember one more thing. It is your breastplate. Wow, so many powerful things. It is His name, Jehovah Sikhinu, the Lord of righteousness. It is His kingdom, righteousness, peace, and joy. It is the foundation of His throne. It is the scepter, of righteousness, of favor. It is the path of righteousness to walk on and put on the breastplate of righteousness. Amen. Faith is the foundation of the kingdom of heaven. Faith is the foundation for heaven and earth. And that's why God wants you to use the, king, the keys of the kingdom. What are the keys for? To release heaven and earth. Jesus told Peter, whatever is bound in heaven, bind it on earth. What is bound in heaven? Stress, fear, worry, anxiety, all that is not in heaven, so bind it on earth. What is loose in heaven? Peace, joy, provision, power, loose it on earth. See, before you lose, you must first bind. So when you are attacked by the enemy in your mind, Bind those negative thoughts. Do not abide the, the, the lies of the enemy that lead to fear. I release, I lose, I have the mind of Christ. I'm here to hear your voice, Lord. God, let me hear you clearly so my faith will increase. So my peace will increase. So my joy. And when you begin to experience the kingdom of God, nothing can shake it. That's right. Now you become the light in the darkness. Now you become the soul of the earth. See, the church is called to be alive at this time. Your blessing and provision is not based on the economy. It's not even based on your company. You should be so valuable to your company that your company won't want to lose you. Because the company knows they're blessed because you are there. The Lord made me such an asset to my company. Make me indispensable because of you, not because of me. The Lord help me increase my value wherever I am so that they will prosper. This is the heart of God. You know, when Jacob had the dream under the open heaven, the Lord told Jacob, in all the families from you, the nations will be blessed. Genesis 28. Let me read that. Okay, verse, verse 14. And your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth, which shall spread abroad to the east, to the abroad to the west, and the east, to the north, and the south. And in you and your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Some would say all the nations shall be blessed. Why? Because of the church. Why was Egypt blessed in the time of famine? Because of Joseph. No Joseph, all starved to death. Joseph became the solution to the problem. You know, God has given each one of you different gifts, different abilities. And so what we have to pray is that God will connect those who have a need for what He's given you. You know, that is how God promoted Joseph. He gave Joseph the gift of dream interpretation. Now how did he promote Joseph? He put Joseph next to the boss who needed a dream to be interpreted. Now Pharaoh couldn't understand, he was stressed out, hey, I have a dream, what does it mean? And when the demand meets the supply, promotion. Same thing with Daniel. Right? God gave Daniel the gift of interpreting dreams. He, put, he gave a terrible dream to the boss so that the boss would connect with the one who can solve his problem, promotion. 
So you all have an answer and a solution to some of these problems that God will use to favor you. So you're going to pray for the divine connection that God will connect you to those who can pray with you because they need what He's given you. So you can say, Father, what have you given me to glorify you? Because that is how you're going to be glorifying Him and be blessed at the same time. Righteousness. God of Romans 15 says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and all peace in believing. Matthew 11 says, We need to take the kingdom of God by force. The beatitude is Matthew 5. Blessed are those who, blessed are the meek, but they shall inherit the kingdom. See, this is our assignment. God wants you to make the kingdoms of the earth His kingdom. How? Release His presence. Release His peace. Release His joy. Release His power. How are you going to do that? The foundation of faith. How are you going to walk in faith? Guard your focus. You guard your focus, you guard your hearing. You guard your hearing, you guard your faith. When you believe, speak. Don't let the mass remind you of the violence. Let the mass remind you of His word. Okay? Paradigm shift. From now on, every time you put your mask on, remember your words. Don't remember the virus. <laughs> say, I'm going to speak life. I'm going to call forth life. Every time you wash your hands, say, Lord, let me glorify you with the way I work in my relationships. Let these hands be hands of blessing. Every time you worry about how close, make sure you're closest to Him. His presence is with you. Amen. You're more aware of His presence than the wrong people's presence. Let this presence upon you shift the atmosphere. And I forgot one thing, temperature. That's in the Bible too, you know. <laughs> Revelation 3. I wish that you're what? hot or cold, not lukewarm. Okay. Jesus doesn't want the lukewarm church. So the fact that he's the morning tell me, you're hotter than most. So I have a hot church. I like the saying in America, I have a hot church. Man. This is hot, hot, hot. Yeah. Hot, you know, you say, somebody is hot or cool. No, you're not cool, you're hot. You're on fire for God. Amen. Amen. Because that's why you're here this morning. God wants to be. You know why being hot or cold is better? And not lukewarm? What's wrong with being lukewarm? You think lukewarm should be better while it's closer to hot. No, no. It is less likely for a lukewarm person to change than for a cold person. Mm-hmm. You know what the evidence of that? The prodigal son. <laughs> the prodigal son and his brother started in the house together, both very cold. No, 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 both lukewarm, sorry. Lukewarm. <laughs> they started lukewarm. Why were they lukewarm? Because they were in the house. They, neither of them left the house yet. But they didn't know their father's heart. So there was no healthy relationship with the father. So they were not hot, they were not cold. Not cold because they're in the house, not hot, hot because they were not close to the father. So they were lukewarm. Until what happened? The prodigal son became cold when he left the house. Only when he became cold outside the house, then he came to his senses, then he became hot. But the elder brother never left the house, we walk forever. No change. Why? Because his physical provision blinded his eyes to spiritual need. Mm-hmm. Only when the prodigal son came to the end of himself, that's why God is allowing the season to shake people to the end of themselves, not to trust in their own brains, look at make about a vaccine. So then they have to depend on him. And the prodigal son lost everything, forced to depend on him. Come home, now the phone became hot. So the journey the prodigal son was, he started lukewarm in the house, became cold in the wilderness, came back home. The elder brother started lukewarm, never left the house, never he remained lukewarm. So the Lord says, I wish you're hot or cold. But at least you're cold, more likely you become hot. If you're lukewarm, you probably never change. And then the match of the church. Then the match of the church. We are satisfied with just getting in up, getting up each man. Just live the comfortable life. But sometimes God allows kingdoms to be shaken to make the lukewarm hot. He wants to make the lukewarm church hot. Because that is when the kingdom comes. He is the God who answers by fire. Like Elijah. He wants to make us hot for him. So now everything the devil is using to make him more aware of his presence, now God will use it to make him more aware of you. Right? Don't be more aware of the virus. Be aware of King Jesus who is crowned King of Kings. He wants to crown your year with goodness. While the rest of the world is crowned with the devil's crown, he wants to crown your year to bless you this year. That's what happened with Goshen. That's what happened with Isaac. He sold in a time of famine and he was blessed. He prospered. Your actions 
but we base on his promises and not what your eyes see. So we are all going through a the world going through a storm, but the effects are different. Right? It depends on which part of the storm you're in, how big your boat is. Right? In the storm, the laundry liner is not so shaken as a little sampan. Right? So the rich can kind of weather it out. But those who are not so rich, it affects the beta. But the most important thing is not the size of your boat, but who's in your boat. Amen. Because when he, when you know that he's in your boat, better the Lord in the little sampan the no God in a huge planet cruiser than the QE2 or Queen Mary or whatever. <laughs> Even the Titanic. Right? No presence. But all the smaller boats who have made the voyage. See, our trust is not on the outward. Our trust is in the Lord. Some will trust in horses and some will trust in chariots. Or we will trust in the Amen. name of the Lord. Some will trust in masks, and some will trust in sanitizer, and some will trust in <laughs> distancing, but we will trust in the name of the Lord. Because unless the Lord protects you, all these things cannot guarantee your protection. Yes. Make sure your trust in Him is greater than what you use for your SOP. Amen. How many of you know that the early church when they met together, I think it was against the law. Christianity was against the law. Because they were against the Roman Emperor. But sometimes when there's a conflict of law, you have to know which law takes precedence. So we have, to be, we have to guard and check ourselves that we don't justify unbelief by calling it wisdom and we don't justify faith by calling it fear or the other way around. But the point is this morning, without faith we cannot please God. Amen. Without faith we will be in an unshakable kingdom. Without faith we will lose our peace, we will lose our joy, we have no authority to do anything. If we want the authority of God, we have to come to the place of peace. We have to speak life. Make sure the mask cuts off every negative word. Speak life to your circumstances. Speak life to your job situation. Speak life to your area of being. Yes. Speak to the mountain. Don't talk about your mountain. Right? Remember, the higher up you go, everything below becomes smaller and smaller. Where are we seated this morning? We're not just seated six floors above, we're seated in heavenly places. Amen. Okay? This is an upper room. But we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. When you are seated in heavenly places, all your big mountains become like little angels. Right? You, when the plane is taking off, all look like all our cars. All the big cars look small, so small, you think they pick it up. Have God's perspective. Amen. When you see the giants, don't look at yourself as a grasshopper. Look at the giants as grasshoppers compared to the Lord. Mm. Whose eyes are you seeing from? You need to begin to walk by faith and not by sight. Trust God. That's the door to the peace of God. That's the door. Why is the kingdom of God so important? But that's the answer to life really. And I'm going to probably open this up a bit more next week on the other three. But once you begin to move by faith, by focusing right, by hearing right, and speaking right, guess what happens? You sense that the next step is that righteousness leads to peace. Amen. And this is where we get the shalom. And this is why the, this is why the Middle Easterners always greet each other. Peace be with you. And also to you, salam alaikum. Why well, you're releasing the complete blessing of God? Because when you're walking in God's peace, you're healthy, you're whole, you have a sound mind. Everything is together. Nothing is missing. Nothing out of place. No stress, no fear, no sickness. But where did the peace come from? Okay. Now, when you're walking in peace, guess what the next step is? In His presence, there is fullness of joy. joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. No joy, you can be Mr. Schwarzenegger and still be weak. You know, all the muscles in the world doesn't guarantee you strength. You want the evidence of that? Go to the psychiatric ward. You know, a lot of depressed people know energy have a very strong lot of muscles. <laughs> but the enemy knows if you can get your mind, you can drop your strength. But how many of you have seen, huh? very skinny old people are full of energy. No muscle also where they get their strength from. <laughs> the joy of the Lord. <laughs> the joy of the Lord. The strength is that the, 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 the smaller sized people are so strong compared to the big people because of joy. Because the joy of the Lord talks about motivational spirit. You know, when you're down and you're sad and you get a call, you get a text, of so how the energy comes. Because your spirit is being revived. God wants to revive your spirit. But you've got to focus right. So in his soul, the, the key to faith, righteousness of faith opens the door to the wholeness of peace, opens the door to the strength of joy. And guess what? Peace and joy prosper your soul. See John 2 says, when you prosper and be in health as your soul prospers. So the kingdom of God is not only physical well-being, 
the spiritual well-being, there's a minor price, and you have the authority to speak to your circumstances, the kingdom of heaven comes down. This is the foundation of the unshakable kingdom. A peace that cannot be shaken, a joy that cannot be shaken, a power that cannot be shaken. The foundation is the righteousness of faith. Guard against distraction. There are two shadows competing for your attention. There are two presences competing for attention. The presence of your enemies or the presence of the Lord. The shadow of death or the shadow of the Almighty. Guard against distraction. Speak life. Make sure your hands honor the Lord in how you do work, in how you treat one another, how you speak to one another. God, who you're close to. Many times we make people make foolish decisions because they surround themselves with foolish people. Walk with the wise and make wise choices. Get advice. Don't just do what the world is doing. Most of the time, majority is wrong. Right? Only Joshua and Caleb made it. All the, the 10 out of the 12 spies, all tribal leaders, all that unbelief. To all the generation that came out of Egypt, only the next generation went in. So that's why the path is narrow. It's not easy. So I want to encourage you this morning that because you're here, number one, God is pleased by your faith. Amen. Number two, Sunday sets the day, sets the path of the week ahead. This is the first day of the week. So believe what brings through this week. Amen. If you set this day apart to glorify the Lord, the Lord, what the enemy means for evil, with all these things to remind me of him, I'm going to use these things to remind me of you. And Lord, I thank you that everything that the enemy is meaning for evil, you are turning it around for good. Because the plans for you and for me are good and not of evil. Amen. And I thank you, Father, that you will make me a blessing to my company. You will make me a blessing to those who need to bless me. Connect me sovereignly to those who need the gift you've given me. I'm going to prosper a time of famine because of your promises, not because of what I see around me. Faith pleases God. Let's stand together.